We fight hard for our kids. It's our most important job. So when Mariam's son Jacob was banned from a childcare centre because he apparently didn't fit in, she was furious. Let's go. They've just turned three and these twins don't have a care in the world, thanks to their loving family. So we've got Zach, who is very energetic, he's very loving, very kind. I would call him Jacob's protector. Then we've got Jacob as well, who's on the spectrum. He's recently been diagnosed with autism. He's very clever, has a love for words and numbers. For first time mum, Marion, help has never been so important. It's been challenging, I won't lie. It's been, it's been hard. I completely agree with the statement, it takes a village. With Jacob's diagnosis, we did need as much support as we could gather. So, you could imagine how she felt when a daycare provider refused her request to look after her son. I'll be completely honest with you, I was just, I was furious. Do you feel like you've been discriminated I against? I definitely believe Jacob has been discriminated against for his disability. You don't need to spend long with Jacob to see he's one cool little kid. Yes. Help please. Help please. Good asking. <laughs> nice job. He's able now to communicate and ask for things. A year ago he couldn't. Kidspot speech pathologist Julia has been critical to Jacob's early journey. So Jacob has difficulties in social interactions and engagement. So when he's dysregulated in particular, so when his nervous system is a little too excited, he can't always make his needs met. But is this toddler oh, too much no. to handle? Oh, no. oh, no! Being able to access daycare and have that modelled for him and for him to be nurtured in an environment where he can feel safe will really help elevate his skills to a new level. With NDIS support available in daycare settings, Mariam never thought getting help for her son would be a problem. It's good that Jacob doesn't feel or understand it and we're taking the brunt, but it's, it's upsetting, you know, it's something that's out of his control. But, you know, that's why mum and dad are here. We're here to fight the fight for him and make sure that, you know, we set the standard for him and all the children. When this daycare opened two blocks from her home in southern Sydney, it was a dream come true for the family. They'd been travelling an hour to daycare. We paid the bond, we were in constant communication with them throughout the year, we were counting down the days till the centre opened. But after orientation, Bridge Street Kids at Blakehurst had second thoughts. Then the next day I got a phone call. The boys had been rejected. I asked how they had come to that decision and their response was they felt it would be unfair for the other children if Jacob was to attend the daycare unfair for the other children? Yes. How did that make you feel? I was furious. I felt they made a decision for Jacob without knowing anything about Jacob. When Mariam raised concerns of discrimination, she received this, a letter from the Bridge Street Kids lawyer, which clearly says if she goes to the media and makes unwarranted statements, they'd sue her. And I could imagine any mother that received that letter would have been terrified and would have been like, OK, I'll just accept this is going to be the life for my child. But no, it's not acceptable. There are laws around Australia which seek to provide a fair go for students with a disability. But legal academic Peter Spiru from the University of Adelaide says the law does allow private care companies in New South Wales to reject a child because of a disability. I don't think the New South Wales exemption passes the pub test and I think it goes against community expectations. I went down every avenue trying to put a complaint in and nothing happened. Bridge Street Kids responded to our request for an interview through a lawyer. In a statement it said, we take our obligations to provide a high level of care for all children very seriously. As such, we had no alternative but to defer the child's commencement given the late notification of his diagnosis by his parents in the absence of requested assessments and reports. He'd have six months before he started school there and a change in environment so quickly is just, it's not it's not acceptable. It was a ridiculous solution. 
A current affair isn't suggesting Bridge Street Kids has done anything against the law. Experts say complaints like this aren't isolated, but human rights cases are dealt with confidentially. Mariam says it's time all parents speak up. Every child, despite their diagnosis or their disability, deserves a chance that every other child does. And that law allowing private childcare centres to reject a child because of a disability is now under review in New South Wales.